I bought the least expensive uh, USB oscilloscope I could find online and uh, this is what's in the package basically a oscilloscope without a screen that hooks up to a USB port and the PC becomes a user interface let's see what does the readme say oh dear well, it doesn't go up to Windows 10 and that's what I found on this computer so I went online to look for the drivers. The website was a little bit counterintuitive, but I figured out which file I needed to download. Okay, this is downloading at a whopping 121 kilobytes per second. I can tell you that's not limited by my internet. Okay, now the setup wizard here. Yeah, da, 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 da. accept. Uh, hmm. Custom installation. Okay, sure, I'll take all these bits. Yeah, okay, install. I'm just fast forwarding through a lot of this installation stuff because it's really not that interesting. Okay, install done. Let's see what we got. We have a uh, thingy. Let's not run this until I connect the scope. Okay, I think I want the oscilloscope. Okay, I guess here's my scope. Hmm. So coming up, there's nothing on the screen and poking around a bit, I realized I need to go into here and actually open up a channel. And I have this hooked up to the uh, test port on here. Well, I guess that's just soft rubber around here. It is the cheapest scope I could find. Uh-oh. Where is my channel? Did I just lose my scope here? Try that again. Channel. Yes, scope is gone. Hmm. Unplug and replug. Channel, channel one, open. There we go. So, something flaky with the connector there. Um, and this is uh, a digital scope, which means I can just uh, pause it. And I still have the signal on here. I'm not liking how much noise there appears to be on these square waves. But the nice thing is, if I'm working with something power electronics, for example, I don't like to leave that running while I'm thinking about what's going on. So I can run this thing, get what I need, stop, and then analyze this more carefully because now I can change the time base and zoom in. And let's see, yes, I can scroll back and forth on this too. And it used to be that oscilloscopes had only a very short trace buffer, but this seems to have a decently long one, uh, which means I can uh, just capture and I can even look at the pre-trigger event. Here's the trigger, and I've got all the signal that preceded the trigger. Let's look at some uh, 60 hertz AC from this benchtop power supply. I'll just hook this up, turn it on. And we see a very shallow wave here because my time base is way too fast. Okay, there's the wave and I guess I need to zoom in a bit. Turn the voltage down. Oh, that does not look right. Uh, maybe AC coupled here or something. Oh, the probe is on 10x, so let's put the probe on 1x. No, that makes no difference. More voltage! Okay, that is not exactly a sine wave. I found the problem. I hooked it up to this probe, and here's the other end of this probe. Nothing coming out of that probe because I hooked it up to the wrong probe. Okay, let's try that on the other one. And there's our waveform. That looks much better. Okay, next thing is I've got my probe set to 1x, and I've got my sine wave. But uh, at 1x, if I turn up the voltage here just a little bit, so it starts to clip. And the clipping is we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 divisions. And we're at 2 volts per division, which basically means we only have a 12 volt range before it starts to clip. Now the probe does have a 10x time switch on it. Um, which means now we're not clipping because I just cut it down by 10 times, but uh, if I turn up the voltage, I expect we will get clipping soon again. 
there. So we have 20 volts per division, and we got one, two, three, four, five, six divisions. So this thing can only do a span of about 120 volts. Not so impressive. Turn it down again, probe back to 1x. Now let's just see how this thing does on DC. Let's turn up the voltage. Yeah, and it goes up, goes up, goes up, and it's gone. So I think I've just saturated this thing by sending about uh, a little bit more than 5 volts into it. Gone. So without the 10x, after 5 volts from center, we seem to be gone. Okay, I now have it hooked up to a stepper motor and it's at 1x and if I turn the motor that generates a bit of a voltage. If I turn it fast the voltage gets bigger and once again we see clipping because it's more than the plus minus 5 volts that this thing can take. I'm disappointed with uh, how slow the screen updates. So I stopped filming just to explore this thing a little bit more and when I bought it, I didn't know a lot about the specs, but uh, what I figured out so far is it has a 1 million sample trace buffer, which it can sample up to 16 mega samples per second. It can also sample at 48 million samples per second, but only 1,000 samples. Looks like it has an 8-bit A to D converter, and at 48 million samples per second, you're good to sampling signals up to about 16 megahertz before aliasing becomes too much of a problem. It uh, only goes to plus minus 6 volts for DC signals before it clips, but if you switch the probes to 10 times, then it's plus minus 60 volts. So you wouldn't want to use this thing to uh, debug a high power AC circuit or a vacuum tube circuit. Things I don't like that much about this scope is you can only get one second of sample into the trace buffer, even if you slow down the sample rate, it will only capture for one second before it stops which kind of sucks for uh, slow signals because with a 1 million sample buffer you should be able to capture a really long signal. The screen is slow to update. It has no roll mode and roll mode has been one of my favorite modes on digital oscilloscopes. I really wish it had that. The cursors, there's a, supposed to be a toolbar for that. I can't seem to be able to pop that up. So I'll have to go through the menus to get the cursors to show up. The spectrum analyzer mode is kind of useless. Uh, and of course, you need to have it hooked up to a PC, which means you need to boot up the PC every time. And some of the noise issues I was seeing, I think, have much to do with this being a PC and lots of digital communications. So having the uh, ground blade hooked up is much more important than it is on an analog scope. And some of the fun stuff, it has uh, the sinus mode, which is essentially XY mode, and that just graphs the uh, X and Y against each other. And I'm using this stepper motor as a generator, and I've got the two phases of it there. It doesn't seem to have the option of actually connecting the dots with line segments. Could be useful for some things. And now I've got it set to 48 mega samples per second, and I've just got this little uh, coil hooked up to my probe. And this is the uh, PC power supply, and if I just put that coil above the power supply, we can catch some of the switching transients inside the power supply. So I'll just capture that and then pause, and then zoom out a bit. And so we've only got 1,000 samples in the trace buffer because we're at the 48 mega samples per second, but on the plus side, it updates much, much faster at this rate because there's only 1,000 samples to get every time. So let's get some cursors, and if I put one here, and the other cursor here, that tells me the big spikes are at a frequency of about 90 kilohertz. So that's probably the switching frequency of this power supply, and these other ones are just other transients of part of that cycle, because it tends to repeat that pattern. Despite some of the shortcomings of this USB scope, I am actually fairly satisfied with it because my criteria was to get a really cheap USB scope. It was pretty much the cheapest I could find. I paid $88 Canadian, including shipping. 
that's equivalent to about $65 US. And it only took two weeks to get here. 